Dad Studios and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about settling a newborn for their newborn session and how we deal with fussy babies as well. So if you're new to newborn photography, tune in. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do to make sure that we've got the best chance of a successful session with our client. So the first thing that we do is we make sure that all of our clients receive preparation guidelines in advance of the session. Now at our studio we do things where we bring our clients in for a consultation appointment while they're still pregnant and we talk them through all of this. Um, however, that's not necessary, but you do need to make sure that you've got guidelines in place to ensure that you've got the best chance of a successful session. And it's just talking about things that you can do to help um, get a baby settled off to sleep. Now for us, what we find is working with a baby that has got a full tummy is absolutely essential for a successful session. The last thing that we want to be doing is trying to position a, a baby that is hungry because that is one of the cues um, for an unsettled baby. Babies will cry to communicate with us and typically that's for one of two things, it's that they're hungry or that they're uncomfortable. Um, and obviously hunger can cause discomfort as well. So that's point number one, is making sure the baby is full. So for us, our preparation guidelines, a lot of that is centered around feeding baby. So for us, we ask our clients to arrive at the studio, um, we'll get baby undressed and at that point we would ask our clients to give baby a feed. Um, if that has been, um, you know, if they've held off on feeding for a couple of hours, they might be due a big feed or if they've not long had a feed, it might just be a little bit of a top up because you'll find that with newborns in general, the vast majority of times, as soon as you take their clothes off, they are going to uh, become quite alert and awake. Um, and if they're not ready for a feed, then often you'll find that they're not going to settle off quite so quickly. So if they can time a feed so that they're hungry when they arrive with you or when you arrive with them, depending on your setup, that would be absolutely perfect in terms of giving you the best chance of a sleepy baby. The second thing then is obviously making sure that they're winded. So you don't want them to be uncomfortable. So a full baby can sometimes induce some wind as well. So before popping baby onto a beanbag, we would make sure that we try and bring any wind up that, um, that they would have before getting started. Um, thirdly to that then, the next thing is obviously making sure that the room is set to a certain temperature because babies at newborn, they cannot regulate their own body temperature. So that's something that we need to make sure that we are looking after. Um, for us at our studio, we aim for around 28 degrees Celsius. That is lovely and toasty, can feel a little bit uncomfortable for the, for the dad usually at times. However, that's absolutely perfect for a baby that is undressed. Um, it makes them feel nice and secure, which is absolutely perfect for a newborn session. It's also not too hot either. So we'd still, you know, with all babies, make sure that we are looking for signs of mottling. If they, you know, their skin becomes a little bit like corned beef, um, which would be sort of letting us know that maybe they're a little bit on the cold side or um, there's an issue with circulation. So we'd be looking out for that to make sure that we're avoiding that. Um, and if babies get a little bit of sweat on the nape of their neck as well, that would indicate that they're a little bit too warm. So we would then start adjusting our temperatures accordingly. So a combination of making sure the baby is nice and full at the beginning of the session, um, that we've brought up any wind that we possibly can and that the, the t temperature in the room is nice and warm are all the main factors really to setting us up for um, a successful session. Now, before we get started with the beanbag posing, we will always um, aim to get baby into a lovely deep sleep as well. Um, and a top tip really as well to make sure the baby is full and satisfied is they will um, relax their hands. So a hungry baby, one of the first signs that they show of hunger before they start crying is they will start to clench their fists. Um, I don't know why, it's just a natural response and all babies will do it. They will bring in a fist when they're hungry. And you'll find that once you're feeding your baby, as the tummy is filling, they will start to relax and their hands will start to drop as well. And they'll become like quite floppy. Once those hands are completely relaxed and dropping, you know that that baby has got a full tummy um, and they will hopefully and typically go off into a lovely deep sleep. So once baby's nice and relaxed like that, we've brought their wind up. The next step then is to rock them off, make sure that they're in a lovely deep sleep. Um, one of the ways that we tell then is we'll sort of giving baby cuddles, wrapping them, around, uh, wrapping them around, tapping their bums a little bit, and then we will lift their arm and just drop it. And if their arm drops um, with no resistance, and I mean, we're only sort of lifting their arm up a little bit and dropping it down. If there's no resistance on that and they don't startle, that is a good time to get started. That shows that they're in a lovely deep sleep. They're completely comfortable. 
um, and should hopefully move through your workflow quite nicely. Um, so that's, that's where we would be looking to aim for before we get baby on the beanbag. For us, we're not going to rush baby to go off to sleep um, and then try and jump these steps because that's going to reduce our chances of a successful session. If baby's not in a deep sleep and you start fussing them and moving them around, then you've got a higher chance of them waking up. Um, and then obviously you're going to have other issues then in terms of restriction on what type of poses you can achieve during your session and that sort of thing. So for us, making sure the baby is in a deep sleep initially um, is a great start. Then little other tips that you can have is make sure that you've got some white noise playing in the background. Um, being quiet for the baby is actually completely counterproductive. Um, I don't know why that's a saying at all. Newborns are used to being in the womb. Um, when they come out of the womb, it seems awfully quiet in comparison. They are used to the decibel level of a freight train um, because they've been in mum's body, they're hearing the heart pumping, they're hearing the blood swishing around. Um, and all sorts of noises on top of the, the noises of the outside world. So being quiet is actually something that would unsettle them more than anything. So we always make sure that we've got some white noise playing in the background as well. And that is typically really, really helpful to keeping them nice and settled. Um, and then obviously once they're on the beanbag, then if they're sort of starting to alert a little bit, we'll just be tapping them, rocking their bums a little bit um, and just making sure that they're nice and comfortable the posing that you're doing as well, making sure that things like their fingers are all flat and straight out, that they're not sort of resting on anything awkwardly. Make sure that their position um, isn't awkward at all and isn't something that they'll be uncomfortable with. That said, newborns are really, really good at telling you if they're not happy with something because their instinct for communication is obviously to cry. So if you do something that upsets that baby, they're going to let you know very, very quickly. Um, and that's your sign then to obviously adjust that pose um, and move on. Then if you've got a baby that's particularly awake or quite fussy, what you can do is go into a wrap. Um, it's not our preference really because it's not generally our style of images, but we do bring in a wrap where, you know, it's a client choice or where it's necessary with a fussy baby. Um, and a wrap can often settle a baby off to sleep because again, of course, they're used to being in a womb. You can imagine that's a really tight and enclosed space. Um, so for them, having their hands and their legs and everything held in quite nicely is a settling, um, gives a sort of a settling vibe off to that baby as well. So that's definitely something you can do. What I will say with wrapping is make sure that you know what you're doing because you do need to do it quite tight. However, you also need to make sure that you're not going to be cutting off any circulation for that baby as well. Um, so you need to make sure that you can always get two fingers around that wrap you're not restricting any airways at all. Um, and even things like with their limbs and stuff, you wanna make sure that it's not too tight um, because they do need to have that little bit of movement to push their sort of legs or arms out a little bit. Um, so yeah, that can often be a really settling factor as well. Um, what would we do if we've got a really, really unsettled baby? Now, typically, if you've got a baby that is not going to sleep at all, is crying quite frequently, um, pulling their legs up and just generally seems quite unsettled. Typically, there is a very good reason for that. Um, again, like I said, with new ones, they have one way of communicating with us and that is to cry um, or shout. And some babies have got really good lungs and, and will make you very well aware of their presence. Now, to me, that would be an indication of trapped wind or maybe a little bit of constipation. Um, now, obviously, we've been doing this for 11 years now. So for us, we will do our best to try and alleviate that wind a little bit. We will cycle baby's legs, try and sort of move any constipation. If they've got a little bit of constipation, get them to, you know, try and get them to go to the toilet to relax them because for us, their safety and comfort is the most important thing. But if we do all of that and we're not getting any luck, our baby is showing a sign that, you know, that they are a little bit distressed and they've got that trapped wind, then for us, we wouldn't force them into a pose we would absolutely have a chat with parents and reschedule their session. And this is something that we do prepare them for as well. It's not something that happens with most babies at all. I would say less than 5% if that, um, where we would need to reschedule a session and bring them back, but it can happen and it does happen. So it is something that we always talk to our clients about that being a possibility. And we explain to them, look, if your baby is showing clear signs of distress, they've clearly got trapped wind, they've got a little bit of constipation, they're griping, we are not going to force them into a position that they are not comfortable with. Um, so at that point, we would look at rebooking your session and bringing you back another day, um, which we don't charge for. 
and all parents are more than happy um, for that provision to be put in place because no parent wants to see their baby uncomfortable or distressed either. So usually they're really, really thankful that we give them that option um, and they're very pleased to hear that we're not going to force baby into poses and positions that they're just not going to be happy with and they're going to be, um, you know, crying the whole time. For us, we want the experience of being at the studio to be calm, relaxed and welcoming. We want the parents to be able to sit back with a warm cup of tea, some snacks, relax and enjoy watching the process of their baby being posed in, during their newborn session. We don't want them on edge worrying about um, you know, the comfort of their baby or anything like that. Because again, newborns do also pick up on vibes, especially you know, their mum's vibes. If mum is feeling a little bit stressed or uneasy or on edge, the baby's going to pick up on that and that's only going to exacerbate those symptoms of, of an unsettled baby. So we would stop that before it even got to that stage. Um, it comes with time, obviously, and, and practice. You do learn and we typically would be able to spot it quite quickly if we think a baby's not going to play ball that day. Um, we certainly wouldn't be putting them in you know, any poses that we feel that they're not going to be you know, comfortable with. So that's typically how we would do things at, at our studio. Everyone, you know, might have their own sort of variations of, of that, but for us, full tummy, make sure that they winded, nice warm room, wrap if necessary, um, white noise, lots of cuddles, and making a really relaxed and calm environment for parents is definitely how we approach our newborn sessions, which gives us a pretty high success rate on making sure that we can get babies off into a lovely deep sleep and work through our newborn poses. If you've got any more questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask. We are hoping that this channel is gonna be really educational with anyone who started out in newborn photography, and we really wanna promote doing things properly and safely as well. So if there's anything that we can help with, please pop a comment down below, and we would be more than happy to make a video assisting you with that. Bye for now, and I will speak to you soon.